boy Blizzy again. You know, I'm back with another one. I had to jump to part two because there was a lot more that I wanted to talk about. You know, but yo, Tariq, now nah, she done, he done put that work in there and you got, got us salute the brother. He put it on for the community. He put it on. He got his name solidified in, his, in hip hop history, black American history. His name is solidified. But back to what I wanted to talk about, right? Now, I wanted to talk about this whole 50-50 nonsense that Dr. Derek Cologne is talking about. You know, I'm not here to, you know, denigrate him, talk crazy about him. No, you know, I'm, you know, I don't seen a couple people be like, yeah, I'm not going to call him doctor. I'm going to call him Derek Cologne or colonizer. I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm going to, you know, um, respect him, call him by his proper pronoun, Dr. Derek Cologne, you know. Um, but I'm going to tell you how it was when I was growing up in New York City, right? I grew up in Harlem. I spent a lot of time in the Bronx, you know, so I know, I know New York City. I, I know New York City. I am New York City. But back to what I was saying, right? When it comes to fashion, that, you know, the Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, the Africans, the, the Haitians, when they come to New York City, they gravitate, they, they gravitate towards our culture. You know, the way how they dress. How they talk, they 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 vernacular. The my nigga, my nigga, my nigga. I'm like, damn, bro, you Dominican, yo, you got some black on me. Don't mean no black. I'm like, damn, but but your whole community and, and you saying nigga more than I'm saying nigga. When I talk, I don't even use the word nigga. I barely, I rarely use the word nigga. But when they talk, nigga, 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 all crazy, right? Our vernacular, our culture, but we don't have a culture. Everybody just take, 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 take. Like, like you know, like for instance, right? Like for instance, when you know when the Dominicans, when the Puerto Ricans and the Haitians, when they come to America and they go to the barber shop, they don't get the same nonsense that they used to get from where they from. They like, oh no, nah, I want to get the, the 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 line or the two lines and the eyebrow. Remember when Jay Z when Jay Z said. Two, um, two, two lines in your eyebrow trying to wild out. And that was from years ago, because that's our culture. They want the FBA hairline, the, the Chelsea fade, with, you know, they, they, they want the, the, the Caesar with the fade, with the two lines on the side, with the design in their head. You know, that's, that's, our, that's our swag, that's our, that's our culture, and we never got credit for it. But what they would do is set up shop, barber shops in, in our community, and have their hairstyles and make it seem like it's from their culture and and we're taking from their culture when they took from us and they we never got the credit for it. Even the Jordans and the Patton Pradas and the uh, the Dolce Cabanas and you know, et cetera, et cetera, all the sneakers, you know, all the swag, all the drip, you know, the way how we dress, you know, all that baggy stuff. Now nah, we don't buy, wear baggy stuff anymore. We got the nice fitted, you know. The, the chains and the bracelets and, you know, even in Do The Right Thing, that movie, when the dude came out with the radio, he had the ring on, had the hot top fade, he had the drip, and the dude came out with the, his, his stereo, he was playing salsa, he didn't have more, no jewelry, you know, he was just looking regular, you know, but then after a while, you know, they didn't graduate toward, toward our culture, but we just never really got the credit for it, but it seemed like the more that they gravitate towards our culture, they try to use it against us because the men will rock our swag and our clothes and everything like that and then tell they women, oh, no, nah, don't mess with that Moreno. Don't mess with that black guy right there. Oh, no, the black guy. We don't rock the black guy. But at the same time, you dress 100% like me, which I don't get. You know what I'm saying? You, you're, you're cosplaying me. You look just like me. Same, same braid, same cornrows, same hairline, same everything. You know, so I, I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? I never I never get it, but we never got credit for it. And now Fat Joe took about we made hip hop 50-50. Blacks and Puerto Ricans wasn't really mingling like that back in those days. You know what I'm saying? Those Puerto Ricans is racist, racist. In our household, we was never taught to hate anybody. And that's what kind of messed us up. Because we was never taught to hate anybody. We was never taught you know, to have self-pride and put everybody down like that. And that's what kind of messed us up because we were too inviting. You know, we go to cookouts. Oh, you can come to our party. You can come to our barbecue. We're too inviting of a people and people just take, take, take. And they, they learn from what we do and take it to their community. 
You know what I'm saying? And you know, like like reggae don't even get foggy until it got integrated with hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Once the hip hop artists started hopping on that reggae throne, that's when it got fire. Reggae ain't get fire until we hopped on it with the hip hop. The when the hip hop artists was hopping on the Jamaican beats and the Jamaican artists was hopping on the hip hop beats, that's when reggae got fire. Same thing with Afro beats. You have to integrate some hip hop and 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 our Black American swag and Afro beats to make it pop. And Afro beats is dying down, but guess what? Hip hop is still alive, thriving. You know, but all that swag is us. And I'm not going to sit here and beat a dead horse, but that's how it was growing up, man. When we started rocking the jerseys with the with the with the uptails, the Air Force Ones, that's when anybody want to do the fittest with the jersey. But the, that's our that's our swag. But at the same time, we would get cosplayed. And get told that oh yo they don't they those people don't they don't like you they talk bad about you in their household but then when they're in front of your face oh yo my nigga my nigga my nigga what's up my nigga I mean nigga I like sneakers I like those sneakers where did you get them from you know all that fake stuff but that's just my experience and I'm glad that Tariq Nasi dropped that bombs on y'all and it's a, it's the truth you know we have so much culture and we just never get credit for it we have so much you know things like oh they low IQ oh no. We're very creative. We're very innovative. The little bit that we do have, we make the most out of it. But anyways, though, man. But you know, FBA up for life. Um, like, share, subscribe. Um, but if you feel the same way how I feel, man, just leave a comment. But that's that serious, man. Yo, we the most cosplay, cosplay people on earth, on earth. Yo, how we at the bottom? But at the end of the day. You know, we the most cosplayed. Everybody want to be like us and get no credit for it. Think about it. It's Blizzy. I'll see you on the next one, y'all. You already know.